Good morning. It is Sunday, November 10th. And I'm going to read some of a very old, well, it's not very old, but for me, I guess it is. Um, I've had this Bible since high school. Um, and it's the message translation. I didn't read it for a really long time because I was all up in arms about translations. <laughs> Um, but I'm, I don't feel that way anymore. I have many translations and translations are just a translation of a different, of a language. Um, of course, even when we read our King James version, New King James version, um, that's why people do word studies into the Hebrew and the Greek because then you can get what some more of the original meaning. Um, so I don't think all is lost. Sometimes I think the message translation can actually say things in a really beautiful way um of course every each to their own <laughs> but anyway I'm gonna read a bit of the bible this morning and I had just flipped it open I just put that here a minute ago um but it came to probably not the best video quality but it came to Samuel and it looks like I've actually highlighted this years ago, I imagine, and wrote a little bit of something. Um, and it's kind of neat because this year is a lot about hearing the voice of God. So I'm just going to read it. And hopefully you can see it. Speak, God, I am ready to listen. The boy Samuel was serving God under Eli's direction. And this was at a time when the revelation of God was rarely heard or seen. One night, when Eli was sound asleep, his eyesight was very bad. He could hardly see. It was well before dawn. The sanctuary lamp was still burning. Samuel was still in bed in the temple of God, where the chest of God rested. So the Ark of the, the Ark <laughs> of the Covenant. Then God called out, Samuel, Samuel. Samuel answered, Yes, I am here. Then he ran to Eli, saying, I heard you call. Here I am. Eli said, I didn't call you. Go back to bed. God called again, Samuel, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli. I heard you call, here I am. Again, Eli said, son, I didn't call you, go back to bed. This all happened before Samuel knew God for himself. It was before the revelation of God had been given to him personally. God called again, Samuel, the third time. Yet again, Samuel got up and went to Eli. Yes, I heard you call me. Here I am. That's when it dawned on Eli that God was calling the boy. So Eli directed Samuel, go back and lie down. If the voice calls again, say, speak God. I am your servant, ready to listen. Samuel returned to his bed. Then God came and stood before him exactly as before, calling out, Samuel, Samuel. And then I wrote something. So this shows God coming doesn't have to be physical sight. Looks like something I probably wrote in high school. <laughs> um, Samuel answered, speak. I am your servant, ready to listen. God said to Samuel, listen carefully. I am getting ready to do something in Israel that is going to shake everyone up and get their attention. The time has come for me to bring down on Eli's family everything I warned him of, every last word of it. I'm letting him know that the time's up. I'm bringing judgment on his family for good. He knew what was going on, that his sons were desecrating God's name and God's place, and he did nothing to stop them. This is my sentence on the family of Eli. The evil of Eli's family can never be wiped out by sacrifice or offering. Samuel stayed in bed until morning, then rose early and went about his duties. Opening the doors of the sanctuary, 
but he dreaded having to tell the vision to Eli. But then Eli summoned Samuel. Samuel, my son. Samuel came running. Yes, what can I do for you? What did he say? Tell it to me, all of it. Don't suppress or soften one word as God is your judge. I want it all, word for word, as he said it to you. So Samuel told him, word for word, he held back nothing. Eli said, he is God, let him do whatever he thinks is best. Samuel grew up, God was with him, and Samuel's prophetic record was flawless. Everyone in Israel, from Dan in the north to Beersheba in the south, recognized that Samuel was the real thing, a true prophet of God. God continued to show up at Shiloh, revealed through his word to Samuel at Shiloh. Today is Sunday, so I'm going to go to our little house church. And I'm sure something will come up, and so that'll be kind of interesting to see. So maybe I'll actually wait to post this until later tonight. Um, but I know last, you know, a couple weeks ago, let me just look at my book here. A, a notebook here. I know the lighting isn't fabulous <laughs> right now, but I'm not a professional videog videographer. Um, you know, I just want to, I want to do a little channel all about the stuff that is important to me. So, Jesus can him. Okay, so, um, I think it was October 20th, around then. Um, I flipped open. I was just reading and I flipped open and it was Acts chapter 2. All about, um how they heard a, so a sound like a strong wind. Everyone was speaking in tongues. Some people heard um, gibberish and thought they were, they were drunk, but then others in the city heard all their mother tongue from their own countries and nations describing God's mighty works. And I wrote that, you know, use your ears, Chantel, because, and like, listen to the Holy Spirit, because, you know... When you're not trying to be tuned in with the Holy Spirit, things might just sound, just go over your head, not really make any sense. But when you ask God and seek him, he will, um, you know, he'll confirm things through, God speaks to everyone in different ways. So for me, a lot of times I'll read it and then all of a sudden someone will mention it and then I'll go to church when I do and the same it'll be the same topic or just cool things that you're like that's it's more than a coincidence so then um so then what happened was I watched Troy Brewer's service that day and that's exactly what he's talking about he was talking about hearing God speak and I just kind of thought it was cool so I think I thought it was kind of neat today when I just randomly opened the bible like I had just opened it to think oh what should I try to read today and it was Samuel 3 speak God I'm ready to listen and I think that's kind of maybe it's just um I just thought it was neat so there is scriptures with shanty because donk is outside <laughs> and all the other piper is not like let's see Do you want to do some scriptures with Piper? She's not a morning dog. And nothing says a good house church than a potluck. So I'm going to bring some pickles that I canned. And maybe some pickle beets as well. I have regular, spicy, all the different types of pickled beets. I have quite a few pickled beets, more than I thought I had. And I have some grape jelly and this crab apple jelly. I love it. I love it so much. Next year I'm going to, me and my sister, we're talking about foraging our crab apple tree way sooner than we did to get as much as we can. Same with the choke cherry. I only got a little tiny bit of choke cherries because they just were all basically gone. So yeah, today I'm going to take some pickled beets and 
not the spicy pickles, but just some regular pickles. How was church today? Church was awesome, thanks. I had my laundry at church today and I got it all cleaned up. <laughs> Grandma's talking about how the Giuseppe pizza guy is cute. He is cute. She likes the way he takes that pizza out of the oven. He's strong. He's strong? <laughs> yes. So now it's my end of day and I just wanted to quickly finish up with what I was talking about this morning and kind of go over um, briefly what I learned today or what we kind of talked about today in our little house church. Um, so this morning, just this last little bit, everything's been about hearing God's voice. That's what everything's been popping up. Acts chapter 2, um, like the sound of a strong wind and everyone was speaking in tongues. Some people thought they were drunk, whereas other people heard their, they were shocked because they heard like their own mother language um, speaking and they were just shocked. Um, and then yesterday I had actually was reading Psalm 106 and it was talking about how um, had it not been for Moses standing in the gap and interceding on behalf of Israel, um, it spared God's judgment on them because no even though God had given them so much, they it says they had a deaf ear. They forgot his promises, they forgot his blessings. <laughs> and it just I don't want to ever get a deaf ear. So I'm gonna just really practice and make time to look more into God's word because I do think it's kind of neat the stuff that gets brought out when you actually read your Bible and try to understand it. <laughs> Sorry. Scriptures are dumb. So anyway, then this morning when I first flipped open randomly, it went to 1 Samuel 3, all about Samuel hearing God's voice for the first time for himself. And I think that a lot of my walk with God, especially when I first became saved when I was in high school, was just kind of listening to whatever I was being taught and just accepting that as truth and never actually like opening up a Bible and reading it for myself and like going deeper and trying to figure out what stuff meant. Um, so anyway, today, talking about in church is, can God actually do what he said he's going to do? Can we trust God that he's going to deliver on his promises? And, and I think that anyone that's gone through life can feel that you have like hopes or dreams and prayers and that sometimes you don't feel like you're getting answered. And I know for me, looking back on years ago, certain things I never thought that whatever happened that I was praying for have happened <laughs> and at the time I went to believed it and so I do think God can deliver and it's important we were talking about how it's important to remember that God is faith faithful in those times because when we're going through our present struggles of our present day it's easy to forget just like the Israelites did they like turned a deaf ear to God they forgot everything that God had given them brought them out of Egypt, brought them out of 400 years of slavery, brought them to the promised land, blessings, everything, and they turned a deaf ear to it. And so when, you know, there's going to be times where we feel lonely or rejected or that 
you know, we're not living out our destiny or, or there's people that we're praying for or, you know, any kind of circumstance. Um, and it's like, do we believe God can deliver? And then, so then we're, we're talking about King Hezekiah as an example in second Kings. He was the King of Judah. He was a loyal King because there was a lot of bad Kings. Um, the Bible isn't full of stories of everyone was doing great. It's a real story, real events, and not everything was always good. And people kind of did what they thought was right in their own eyes, just like we do now. And, but King Hezekiah was very loyal. And that's one thing I've heard Pastor Troy Brewer say, is that we don't have to have our act together all the time, but you need to stay loyal. And I think it's just so easy for us to fall into a condemnation of feeling like we have to be perfect and we can't. That's just not how, it, we just can't. That's not how it is, but we do need to stay loyal. And I wish I had stayed loyal. I'm glad that I've come back to the Lord, but I wish I had stayed loyal during those years where I wasn't loyal. <laughs> so anyway, King Hezekiah was a king that um, it just said there was no king like him before or after. And the king of Assyria was taking over all of these nations, knocking them down, and was sending, sending threatening letters to King Hezekiah and, you know, freaking everybody out, saying, like, what makes you think that your God's going to save you, your nation, because we've wiped everyone else out? And, you know, instead of, like, listening to the enemy's voice, he went to the Lord in desperation right away. And he had a prayer and it was in 2 Kings 14. He said this prayer to the Lord and then that night, God changed things in one day. And that's how I've seen it in my own life. Things can be going for a long time in a direction you don't want. And then in the matter of one day, God can change everything. And... The angel of the Lord came that night and struck down all the enemies and everyone was dead. So then just kind of thinking about that, I just think it's wild that literally instead of listening to the enemy's voice, sorry, my cat, instead of listening to the enemy's voice, King Hezekiah cried out before God and within a matter of one night, it says that, and it says, and it so happened that that very night, an angel of God came and massacred 185,000 Assyrians. When the people of Jerusalem got up the next morning, there it was, a whole camp of corpses. King Sennacherib of Assyria, like, left right away um, and had headed, went home to Nineveh, the same Nineveh of Jonah. Um... So anyway, to me, I just think that I know that often when I'm feeling low, like I've had days where I've like where everyone has those days of feeling low. It's usually like two or three days of feeling low where I decide to actually try to like read my Bible and seek God because sometimes my first my first thought is just to keep myself busy and to do activities and you know that kind of thing kind of just talking about how the Lord's hand is not short and that he sees us. He sees us. And, you know, sometimes things take, sometimes prayers feel like, prayers feel like they take a long time, but stay loyal. That's one thing I wish I had done so many times, just stay loyal to the Lord because looking back now, God was loyal. Yes, maybe everything is in my timing, but when he does, do something, you can change your whole circumstance in one day. It might not be the day you think it's going to be. It might not be like right away. But when he does, he changes it in one day. And the other thing I wanted to read, Philippians 4 verse 8 says, Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. So yeah, today I really just felt that, you know, we have to listen, don't have deaf ears, and just when things don't go your way, or when you don't think they're going to the way, your way, take time to sit down and remember all the things that God has done, and 
that is all I have for today. <laughs> so um, thanks for tuning in and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.